bring the people of the United Nations the most sensational news of the war, the surrender of Italy. In New York, Americans of Italian descent are first to celebrate. Their sons, their brothers, help bring peace to the country of their birth. Vino for victory. And again, Italian and American flags hang side by side. Here, with the sailing for North Africa of the greatest armada ever seen in the history of the world, begins the story of the dismembering of the Axis. How Allied troops landed in force to join General Montgomery's 8th Army in driving Rommel from North Africa is one of the dramatic chapters of the war. General Eisenhower, Supreme Allied Commander, and General Montgomery. Lieutenant General Mark Clark, commanding the combined 5th Army. Casablanca. Here, meeting with the Allied High Command, President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill gave to Germany, Japan, and Italy two words, unconditional surrender. Prelude to invasion. From a hundred African bases, Allied bombers swarm across the Mediterranean, softening Italian island strongholds with overwhelming air power. of Pantelleria falls to the Allies. The invasion of Sicily. 2,000 ships bringing great armies of battle-hardened British, Americans, and Canadians. Action off the coast of Sicily, producing one of the most spectacular pictures of the war. American landing at Jaila is virtually unopposed. In the Sicilian town of Mezzo Giusto, the arrival of an American jeep brings to the scene a human touch. Salvatore Di Marco, who left the town when he was 15, returns to his family as a corporal in the American army a family reunited by the strange tides of war. Nazis stranded in Italy by the amazing Allied stroke are speedily rounded up and shipped out of the country. Troops numbering more than 13 full divisions surrendering to United Nations forces. The occupation of Messina within sight of the Italian mainland foreshadows Italy's unconditional surrender. Troops of General Patton's 7th and General Montgomery's 8th Armies join in preparation for attack on the mainland itself. Above Messina's municipal building, the Stars and Stripes proclaim the Allied occupation. Allied soldiers and civilians meet on new and friendly terms. The harbor, choked with ships bombed and shelled from air and sea, was untenable for the Germans. Forced to leave from the beaches, the Nazis fled across the Straits of Messina. Here, under the guns of British and American artillerymen, began the assault on the mainland of Italy. Benito Mussolini echoed louder than the Allied guns. Benito, for 21 years a fascist Caesar. Now this, from his own countrymen. <laughs> Nazis 
sea-held Italian ports are attacked by combined American and British naval forces as far north as Genoa. General Eisenhower boards a British man of war, planning his strategy with Admiral Sir Andrew Brown Cunningham, veteran commander-in-chief of Allied naval forces in the Mediterranean. And the bulk of the Italian fleet steams to Allied ports. Battleships, cruisers, destroyers, submarines. The world's fifth largest navy, now in the hands of the United Nations. From Washington, President Roosevelt says, An armistice with Italy has been concluded. It is a great victory for the United Nations, but it was also a great victory for the Italian people. After years of war and suffering and degradation, the Italian people are at last coming to the day of liberation from their real enemies, the Nazis. But let us not delude ourselves that this armistice means the end of war in the Mediterranean. We must drive the Germans out of Italy as we have driven them out of Tunisia and Sicily. We must drive them out of France and all other captive countries. And we must strike them on their own soil from all directions.